What is going on everybody? It's Roku and we're back with some more League of Legends content. And today I've got a very, very nice video here. This is my season 11 updated item guide for Darius, right? So what I'm going to be doing in this video is putting these items in this tier list right here. And like, I'll be explaining things like how often you should build them, what you should build them into, and whether you should build them to begin with, right? My tiers can be separated into these categories. So I have unusable here, which is basically for the items like AP items or like support items that Darius doesn't really build or care about. Barely functional items, which have stats that Darius likes or kind of work with them, but you know, you should never be building these. Unviable items with uses, which is basically like four fun items that are really fun when it works, but they're mostly just like, you know, they're mostly garbage and you should never build them in solo queue. Counter items, which are the items that you build in solo queue against specific champions or specific team comps. Great, can be built into most games, are wonderfully viable items that you can get away with building, but you have to build them in specific games, right? You're not gonna build them every game, basically. And the best items for every game. These items are basically the items that you're gonna get every single match, right? Like, it's good into everything. So, yeah. Here's how I've split up my tier list. And this video is basically an updated version of my previous item guide. I don't know if you guys remember, but back in no November, when the preseason for Season 11 dropped, I instantly made a new, like, like not a new, but like an item guide talking about all the new items. And I basically did what I'm doing in this video, right? I was in game and I was showing how to use the items and I told you guys, you know, what the best items were. Now that video isn't wrong by any means, but we're in, we're like five patches into season 11 now, right? The meta has kind of changed and some of the items in that video, like I didn't really represent them to their best. Like, you know, I didn't really represent them fairly because that was just straight out of the gate and the meta hadn't evolved yet. Most of that video is still good, but this video is going to be even more accurate. So yeah, I'm going to be starting off with all the mythic items in the game. Then I'll go into the boots and then I'll finally start talking about the legendary items, right? Which are basically just normal items that you can build. So yeah, guys, like, comment and subscribe for more great Darius content. I have a few coaching videos lined up where I do coaching, right? I coach people and I'm going to be trying to see if I can record some of those sessions and I might upload some of those sessions on YouTube. And like, you know, those sessions should be very, very nice for you guys because they cover a lot of great, like, you know, um, concepts and things. So I think you guys are going to love it if you guys are serious about improving. So stay subscribed for those videos and uh, yeah, click the notification bell. And if you want to get coached by me, I, my prices aren't that high. You can go into my Discord, link in the description and shoot me a DM, right? I'll be online on Discord. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to see me and DM me. So yeah, just send over a DM and I'll be able to um, talk to you about the details of the coaching. Anyway, let's just get right into the video. First off, Stridebreaker, right? This item needs no introduction. This is the best item in the game for Darius, right? I mean, I've said all there is to say about this item, and if anybody tells you anything else, they're wrong. I know some Darius mains who are respected recommending Gore Drinker, or they used to recommend Gore Drinker when the new items were out, and I thought this was insane, right? No respectable or knowledgeable Darius player should recommend anything else except Stridebreaker. Stridebreaker is the best item in the game for Darius, and you should be building it into basically anything and everything, right? Great item, wonderful, and the only reason you wouldn't build it is if you have some personal vendetta against it or something. Or maybe if you just like more brain dead stats, but we're gonna get into those other mythics, right? So Stridebreaker is one of the best items, right? Divine Sunderer. Divine Sunderer, I would say, falls into the counter items, you know, list. Not necessarily because it's a counter item, but like, because it's basically a worse version of everything that's available, right? It's like the Sheen item you get when you're up against tanks, right? So it's really, really good into tank your compositions, but we have other ways of flexing our build to deal with tanky compositions that makes Divine Sunderer not so useful. Not to mention how it gives us 
percentage armor pen and magic pen, which is basically useless for Darius because we already have armor pen and also like magic pen. Like we're not going to use that. So Divine Sunder is not so great compared to Stripe Breaker, right? Gore Drinker. Though it's, by the way, all mythics are horrible when compared to Stripe Breaker. This is the best mythic, they're all bad, but I'm comparing them versus all the items in the game. And compared to that, Gore Drinker is not a bad item. You can build Gore Drinker into teams where they have a lot of melees, and these guys just love to, you know, uh, fight with you on your melee range, right? We all know that against most proper, like, um, combatants and opponents, like, you're not going to be having a lot of people in your melee range most of the time. And if you are, you just it's when you're stunned and you're about to get one shot. Which is why Strikebreaker is better. But for those rare games where the enemy team is like kind of a lower damage team and they're all melee, it's like a tankier team, Gore Drinker works wonders because it gives us a ton of stats, right? A ton of HP, a ton of AD. It gives us Ability Haste, which is, you know, an underrated stat on Darius. Not, not, not too important, but it's still required. And its active is quite, quite good, right? It's like a second Q. And you can combo it with your Q at the same time to, like, you know, heal back a lot of your HP. It's just not as good as Strybreaker, right? Triforce, our old favorite old friend from last season. Triforce, in my opinion, is better than Gore Drinker, right? It's still not one of the best items, but it's an amazing item for 1v1s, right? Triforce, the Sheen proc the move speed and the ad even though it's bonus ad it still adds a lot of damage with the sheen so like this item if you're struggling in 1v1s is basically going to win you the 1v1 if you have ghost the bad part is it makes us kind of worse in team fights right so like it makes us it lets us one shot squishies way faster which is why i think it's better than gore drinker because darius's job is to one shot squishies like with our flash ghost we can do a lot of damage to the back line but Gore Drinker is more of like a tankier version of it. Like, this is more better for split pushing, right? So if you're split pushing, Triforce just eats up turrets so hard. Like, you just consume turrets with that Sheen passive. So, yeah. Um, this item is very good for 1v1s. It's good if you have your sums up. Not that good if you don't have them up. But, like all other items, it's not Strybreaker. So it suffers. Duskblade. Um... Duskblade is basically a for fun item, right? You're going to be building this only in Earth, I guess. Like, I don't think there's much to tell about this. The stats in it aren't great. The invisibility is okay until you get to start playing against intelligent players. Like, oh no, there is just one shot someone. I wonder where he's going next. Like, there's not much quirky movement you can do with Darius. He's a very, like, you know, readable champion when you have, like, ghosts and stuff. So it doesn't have that much uses. Prowler's Claw is basically just a worse version of Stridebreaker, right? For multiple reasons, right? First off, Stridebreaker, I mean, Prowler's Claw's range is actually lower than our E range. So this does not extend our range at all. And you can't just dash in any direction. You have to dash through a target. And though this is pretty good against champions with mobility, you have to remember, like, it's lower than E range. So a champion with mobility that doesn't get it out of your E range. Like, you don't need Parlous Call to kill that guy. He's dead already, right? So, this item is just a waste. It's basically like a really, really horrible Yasuo E, right? So, I'm going to put it in barely functional, actually. With Eclipse. Now the, now, the active on Eclipse is actually quite good for 1v1s, right? I'm going to put it unusable. Because Eclipse is actually pretty good in 1v1s. Right? It gives us that shield, the percentage damage, and the move speed. So you can do R, W, Q, and you're really fast, they're kind of slow. But it's just the stats, man. Like, it doesn't give any tankiness aside from the shield. So, if it had these kinds of tankinesses, it would be a bit more viable, but, you know, it's an assassin item. Darius is built different to be building assassin items, right? My nose is itchy. Okay. Immortal Shield Bow. This item is barely functional, right? It offers us nothing. And I've already made countless videos on why lifestyle is horrible on Darius. Basically, um, you're a champion who takes a lot of damage, so you'll never be able to lifesteal a significant amount of HP. Not to mention how your Q healing is going to be bigger than any sort of lifesteal you're ever going to get. So if you just master how to land your Qs, you're not going to need lifesteal because that Q heal is going to be bigger than any lifesteal you can build reasonably. So lifesteal and Omni Vamp are kind of bad on Darius. 
which is why this item doesn't really do anything for him. And they're like talking about, right, it's talking about nerfing this, which means that what they're going to do is they're going to remove the extra life stealing at the shield, but they're going to do it so that if you hit something, you get more attack speed, right? You guys can look it up on Twitter or the PvE, but yeah, those are the changes for the shield bow, which make it an even worse item. Kraken Slayer. Though this item is not still not useful, it gives us a ton of damage, right? It's... It's horrible, right? It has no utility. It gives us no tankiness, but at least it's better than a shield bow. It gives us a ton, ton, ton of damage, right? So there's not much to say about this. Darius is not a ranged auto attacker, so this is kind of horrible, right? Gale Force is actually not the worst mythic. Now, it used to be a counter item. Now, it used to be good when Starbreaker is ranged for 200, right? This has 450 range. Now that Stridebreaker has 300 range, this item basically has no use, but there are some like really like good Darius players who built game Gale Force into all of the games. And the dash on Gale Force is actually was actually quite good, right? Now it's nowhere near as good as any of the other mythics, right? Of course. But it works better with Darius than like, you know, all of these. Not to mention how crit is actually better than lethality because crit is such an overstated stat. So I don't know, Gale Force is quite good for Darius. It's better than Prowless Claw by far because you can dash in any direction. The 90 second dash cooldown does make it kind of bad, but you know, it's a decent counter item. I'm gonna put it on viable because I don't want you guys building this, but know that it's, it's, it's like way better than all of these items, right? Turbo Chem Tank. This item, oh, where do you go? Okay. This item is a great mythic and it can be built into most games. It's better than these bruiser mythics, right? This item is our go-to tank mythic, right? If you don't want to build Stridebreaker, or if you died in lane and want to tank up quickly, you go for chem tank, right? Or if your team has already a ton of damage and you got a front line, you go for this bad boy. And this thing lets you tank way more. It lets you engage better. The extra mythic passive of the stats is also great. So yeah, this is a wonderful little item here that you can build when you're inting basically and at the front line for your team, you know? Frostbite Gauntlet, I think, is not the best item in the game. You can kind of build it against teams where the slow is going to be very helpful, so teams without dashes, but like with how many dashes every single person has, you're not going to run into that situation very often now, are you, right? So yeah, this is not the best item. By the way, I kind of forgot about the boots, so I'm going to do those at the end of the video. So sorry about that. So yeah, um, this is a, it makes it decently tanky, but yeah, it's not. And it's mythic passive is very, very good, but you know, it's not the best tank mythic compared to this guy. Infinity. Okay, I think we're just done with the mythics. Oh, so I just, conf I got confused. Okay, never mind. I got confused, guys. Sorry. I'm going to talk about the boots now. I'm done with the mythics. Okay, okay. I just got to call it up in thought thinking about this dog item all right um let's just move on to the boots then i'm gonna um put the boots like in a column like this hopefully you know so i'm gonna put them like first but yeah um let's just get right into it i put the magic pen boot here because it's virtually unusable so let's just like sort these guys out this is just like it's barely functional right if you're playing some sort of roam heavy darius build then I guess you could use it, but it's like, you're basically just building this item if you've into the game and you're trying to run it down mid lane as much as possible. Merc Treads are an amazing boot, really, really good into teams with high CC, really good in lanes where they have annoying CC that you have to overcome to kill them, like cannon or something. Great item, right? It's not a rush item. You need it better. It's, it's a better team fight item than a 1v1 item. You're not gonna get it the first thing in lane. You're gonna rarely get it. But that doesn't mean it's a bad item anyway, right? Swifties. Swifties is actually not the worst item for Darius, right? You know, it's very, like, it's very cheap. It's cheaper than the other boots, which makes it great. It gives us slow resist. So against champions like, let's say, Anivia, Ash, or Victor. So, uh, no, not the, the old Victor that used to build Iceborne. It is very, very good, right? But you only build this item when you don't have to build treads or it's plated steel caps, right? So if you don't have to build these or these, 
then you can build these, right? But for the most part, you know, you're gonna be building Merc Treads or Plated Steel Caps in almost all your games, right? But still though, this is an underrated item for Darius. Berserker Greaves. I've seen some Darius players go with this item when they're insanely fed and it is quite fun to use, but it's just a troll item. We don't need even more attack speed. We have enough attack speed in Strikebreaker. And, you know, um, it's like at least this item, at least Boots of Swifties actually gives you something instead of the tankiness these two give. This gives us nothing we can use, right? Plated Seal Caps is quite, a, it's, it's basically just one of the best items in the game for Darius to rush early on because a lot of these like bruiser matchups like Kled, Jace, Riven, Renekton kind of are unplayable without Ninja Tabis, right? You need Ninja Tabis to actually survive it to some of these guys, so it's one of our best items. <laughs> Lucidity Boots basically gets the same spot as um, Zerk Greaves. I actually put them here, right? Because, like, Berserker Boots, like, I mean, not Berserker, but Lucidity Boots just give us more CDR, and CDR is really not worth, like, sacrifice. I mean, it's not really... Sacrificing all the other six stats we get, it's not worth it, right? So, it's not... It's not worth it to get Boots of Lucidity, right? So, yeah, I've organized the Boots to be, like, in a straight column, so there's, like, a nice little divide. So, it's, like, Boots, Mythics, and then the normal items, right? By the way, just forget about this row. It's like, I didn't even organize this. I just don't care about these. Okay, now we're in the part of the video for legendary items, and it's already 16 minutes, so I'll try to see if I can get through these fast. IE is horrible, right? It's not viable at all, but if you're going for a troll build, then I guess it can be quite fun to just one-shot people with W. So, yeah, it's just right here. We don't need the Mortal Reminder, to be honest. It's just a troll item, right? It doesn't work with Darius at all. And we already have an amazing anti-heal bruiser item that basically makes this, like, worthless, right? Same for Lord Dominix. Like, you know, we don't need the extra armor pen. And, you know, we don't need the other stats that this item gives. Um, I'll actually put the Manimune stuff together. Now, Manimune isn't the worst option, right? What you can do on Darius now... I'm gonna see if I can get a gameplay video of me doing this, but if you're into a hyper free matchup, you can start tier and just rush Man Immune, like, you know, second item instead of Sterex because it's only like 2.2k or so. And at that point, or 2.4k, I think, I'm not too sure about the price. And yeah, at that point, right, this can be a very big damage boost. Of all the buildable damage items, Man Immune gives us the most damage when it is completed, but like, Free matchups are not that often, right? So if you're up against Scion, then yeah, sure, you can do it. But like, you know, by building it, you're not getting yourself AD in lane and you're reducing your own kill pressure, which is kind of insanity. So you don't want to do this if you're trying hard. But if you're playing with your friends and have, you know, some guy you're smurfing against who doesn't know how to play the game, then, you know, try it out. Let's see how it works. Sterax Gauge. This is my favorite item in the whole game. I love everything about it, right? And it's just so cool. It has like the coolest icon too. It's just this armored hand, just... But yeah, this item is amazing for Darius because it gives us two things that we love, right? It gives us tankiness and it gives us damage. And it's one of the only items in the game that have AD that gives us good tankiness, right? Most AD items in the game, items with AD and damage, don't give us good tankiness, right? Most if not all of them, Gives us horrible tankiness because those are damage items. This is probably the only damage item in the game who gives us noticeable tankiness, right? Because that shield and team fights, man, that, that saves your life, man. And they buffed the shield from last season, so with the team fight focus build, I mean, with a team fight focus playstyle that Darius has adopted in the current season, Sarah's Gauge is an insanely viable item. Spear Visage. Spear Visage is a very, very good item because of another item that I'm going to get into. But yeah, Spear Visage improves our healing and our shielding. And because we'd like to go a lot of shield items on Darius in this season, Spear Visage becomes a very, very solid choice, even if the enemy team doesn't have that much magic damage, right? Because it improves our healing, it improves our Sterex Gauge, and the other shield item that we build a lot that I'm going to get into right now. So yeah, it's basically because of its synergy with our other items, Spear Visage has now become, like, way better than Force of Nature, by the way, right? I knew I used to recommend Force of Nature a lot, 
but Spirit Visage is now better than it because of how well it synergizes with the rest of our kit, right? Sunfire Cape, it's arguably the worst tank item. It, it, Darius cannot use the fire thing better than other tanks because with other tanks, they just get on someone and they stay on them until the end of time and they don't die because they're too tanky. Whereas Darius, you kind of have a kite play style where you're running around the person, queuing, staying away from them and then going in for an auto attack. So Sunfire is not a great item. Cleaver. Uh, sorry to everybody who just got triggered, but even though they buffed Cleaver, it's still not the best item, right? The basic issue with Cleaver and all the other damage items is that it's only good into specific team compositions, right? If they have a lot of people who just stack armor, let's say they have um, a Mumu, Malphite, Thresh, like just a ton of tanks, right, that love stacking armor, then yeah, you can go Cleaver. And if you lost lane to a tank, like going Cleaver will win you all-ins, right? So let's say you lost lane to um, Orn, then Cleaver will win you the all-in, right? Because the Shred actually helps you a lot against tanks. And also it's a very nice support item, not a support item, a supportive item, because if you cleave a tank, they won't just be more killable to you, they'll also be more killable to your ADC and your like, you know, their 80 damage dealers. So it's a very, very nice item into the right compositions, but it's just not an item I would recommend into most games. Now, to be fair, Cleaver is probably the most viable AD item other than, you know, I mean, other than Sterax. So if you have to, right, if you're just itching for more AD, you can go Cleaver, but it's like, you know, it's still only good into certain circumstances because the tankiness it gives is just HP, right? So it's not the best. Bloodthruster, same camp with, you know, all these other reject items. Ravenous Hydra, it's just not that good on Darius. It's actually quite horrible. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Thornmail. Thornmail is actually quite a nice ball of stats for Darius, right? Tank items are going to get higher places on this tier list, by the way, but yeah. Um, Thornmail is a great item because, one, it builds out of Bramble Vest, right? So you're going to have Bramble... If you, for games where you need to get Bramble, it's going to be like a good upgrade. And two... It's like a really good amount of stats, right? The only bad thing about it is the active, or not the active, the passive effect. The super good Grievous Wounds, the 60%, only applies to people you have pulled, right? Only applies to people you have hard CC'd, and the only hard CC that Darius has is his pull. So it's the only reason it's not good is because of that. Because of that reason, you might as well just keep the Bramble list and not build this until like the very end of the game. But it's still a good tank item. Warmogs. I'll put Warmogs at counter items, not because it's bad, but because all the other tank items are just so much better. And this is one of the changes, one of the big changes that I wanted to make from last, like one of my last item guide. I recommended Warmog because of its combo with the other tank item, but that's not the best because like not getting resistances in League of Legends is suicide, right? There's a reason nobody builds Warmogs because you need to have resistances and health to properly tank up against damage. And Warmog just doesn't offer that, right? So yeah, it goes into the counter items because though it's like, it's not a counter item, it's just buildable, more buildable than these guys, right? Wit's End. Wit's End is a counter item. It's almost unviable, right? But because Wright added AD, you can't kind of build it against full AP teams, right? So if you need a lot of MR, it is buildable. But you're better off just going, um, tuck, tuck. I'm gonna explain the full build later, but you're better off just going the rest of the AP, I mean, the rest of the MR items, right? So it's buildable because they added AD, it's just not too great. I'm actually gonna put it in on you, on viable, because I don't want you guys building this either. <laughs> so, Frozen Heart. Frozen Heart also lands in this camp for the same reason that, um, Bramble, I mean, not Bramble, um, Warmogs ends up in this camp. You need to have both HP and the resistances to be a tank item. If you have just one of them, you're not gonna be doing that great, right? And Frozen Heart basically suffers because of this reason. It's just not very good. And it's only good if you're up against like um on hit champions, where you really need like, you know, 
to reduce their damage, but the resistances won't really do much. But the health, I mean, won't do much, right? So let's say you're up against AD Shivana or Master Yi or something. Then it is kind of viable, but you don't really run into that that often, though, do you? Ginsu's. <laughs> Merc Scimitar. <laughs> Yumu's. It's not the worst item, to be fair. It's... It's one of the better 4 fun items because it gives us move speed, so it's like a it's like a worse version of Ghost that it offers us, but it is an assassin item with lethality. Randuins. Randuins has become like it's a counter item, but it's so good at countering. And the things that it counters are kind of often. So like I put it in can be great, can be built into most games. If you're up against a crit carry who you can actually get into the range of, then this item is gonna be your bread and butter, right? Because basically what it does is, it's worse than last season, because last season it just blocked crit damage, but now you have to activate it on the guy you're trying to block damage from. But the guy that is caught in the active of this won't be doing any more like damage from their auto attacks anymore, because it reduces their auto attack, da auto attack damage and their crit damage. So if you're fighting as someone who's like a Yone, a Yasuo, a Samira, a champion who's built any sort of crit item, and you activate this in their melee range, then they're just spawned, right? They're doing way less damage to you, right? And if we were up against such champions, we have Tabis as well. So that's 12% less damage from auto attacks, plus all the reduction that Randuins gives us, right? So it's very, very good into very fed AD champions, right? So it's a great item. And if you're up against like a fed Yone, you have to rush this. And the second you get into the fight, boom, activate it, and that Yone is gone. Bork. I know there are some Darius players, or one Darius player, who loved this item last season. And my opinion of it is same as last season. It's a horrible item that should never be built. Honestly, you're inting if you build this. Disgustingly horrible item. Maw. Maw is actually not that bad because they're continually buffing this item right it's still not buildable right it's still not the best item to build but it just has good stats so say you're up against a full mo a full ap team then it's an okay option right the only reason you would build this in like a realistic game is if you're up against let's say um cassia or something and you bought hex drinker which you shouldn't do this for obvious reasons, but you know, just build MR and run them down. Darius doesn't need it that much. But in case you're very aggressive and you're losing lane and you want to just get kills, Hex Drinker is a very nice counter item and it basically wins you all all in this against AP champions. But still, if you're not in a game where you can build Hex Drinker, where, where you should build Hex Drinker, then you shouldn't build this item. And the thing about Hex Drinker is there aren't many games where you should build that. So yeah, it gets into our counter item territory. It's far better than Wit's End, but. Yeah, the only thing bringing this down is that it's not the Sterex Gauge. If they made it so that it stacks with Sterex Gauge, then I think there might be a case for it, but I just don't see it, man. It's just horrible. Sanguine Blade. Barely functional, right? It's like here with Darius, you're going to be fighting multiple targets at once. So, yeah, I wouldn't mess around with this item. And here is the one item that I was the most unfair to, Gargoyle Stoneplate. This item is like insanely good. Most of the time, your build's gonna be Strybreaker, Sterax, and then Gargoyles. Just these three items, right? Gargoyles is such a strong item. It's so good into teams where they have mixed damage, so you have nothing specific to build against. And if you're a player who lacks the knowledge to specify your builds, it's a great item because it basically works into anyone, right? You just have to use it when you're about to take damage. And you know, you gotta be proactive about it and be aware that you have it. But yeah, it's an amazingly great item. And it basically, its existence buffs up the usage of um, Spear of Visage because this item increases all the shields by 25%. So it increases Sterex's shield, Gargoyle's shield by 25%. So it's an amazing item to combo with Gargoyles. So the four item build, unless you're against a team that ha that is full AD, which is rare, is Strybreaker, Sterex, Gargoyles, and then Spear of Visage. And then of course Boots at some point, but yeah. Right, so that's an amazing four item build right there. Very, very powerful. Essence Reaver, it's probably one of the better crit items because it gives us Sheen, it gives us CDR. So it gives us like things that are useful at least instead of just AD and crit. So if you're gonna have to go like a crit item, this is it. It's still not that great though. 
So I wouldn't cut on it too much, but if you have to, go that, I guess. Dead Man's Plate. Dead Man's Plate, now they've nerfed it a lot, right? So it's now into our counter item territory, where you build it if you really have to move around the map a lot. Like, if you're, like, you know, if you're taking CS and your team gets into the fights a lot without you, then you get Dead Man's because the move speed allows you to move around the map so much faster than usual. So, yeah, if you gotta have a lot of map mobility, it's really good. It's just that they took a lot of stats out of it, so it's not as good as it used to be. One great thing about it, though, is that if you have a like a six item build, let's say it's late game, right? Everyone's a six items. Dead Man's Plate is the only item you can buy instead of boots. So a lot of champions late game sell their boots and buy a, like an extra item. Dead Man's Plate is the only item that can replace boots in the whole game because the amount of move speed it gives is more than the move speed a boots gives, right? When it's fully stacked, you know? So this combined with the passive of Stride Breaker, so if you have that mythic passive from Stride Breaker, then it is viable to get Dead Man's. So, like, it's very good to reserve this item for hyper late game so you can have a complete, like, six item build and, you know, like, sell your boots and get Dead Man's. But selling your boots anytime before six items is um, not recommended. Edge of Night, like the other assassin items that give us utility, it's quite okay, right? It's still an assassin item with lethality, which sucks, but at least it gives us HP and it gives us like a, a spell shield, right? So it's good from that perspective compared to the other horrible items, but it's still bad. GA. GA has lost a lot of its usability from last season because like the other items are just so much better, right? And the stats that GA has are quite honestly so, so pathetic. It's 40 AD and 40 armor, which is hilariously bad right? If they buffed it, like, you know, Zhonya's has great stats, right? Zhonya's has incredible stats for how strong the active is. Us AD champions, we just don't get that. So it's unfair, I know, but we do what we can, right? And this is just what we're forced to deal with as AD champions. So yeah, um, Guardian Angel, it's okay if you're the only fed person on your team and your death can mean, like, it's horrible and you, like, it's like, you're the only damage dealer on your team, but you have a lot of frontliners who can hold the fight for you while you're dead, right? Then it's not the worst purchase. But still, I wouldn't like, you know, um encourage you to build this item so much. It's 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 more it's got a it's got good utility compared to these guys. It's just not that viable. The only reason it's even here is because um stopwatch is really overpowered and broken on any champion. Um uh, force of nature. As I said, this item is weaker than it used to be in terms of the meta, right? I kind of overhyped it. It's very, very good if you built um, the Negatron Cloak, right? The 900 MR item, right? The Negatron Cloak is a very, very um, useful item because it's 900 for 50 MR, right? It's 900 for 50 MR. That's insane. So if you're in an AP matchup, instead of going Hex Drinker or something, just go Negatron Cloak. And that's gonna win you the all because that 50 MR is insane. It's the only item in the game that you can rush that gives a decent amount of MR, right? Because Merc just gives 25. Whereas, you know, that item gives us 50 for 900 gold. That's insanity. So if you have that and you have to build up to something, then it's a wonderful choice. But it's just not as good as Spirit Visage when you have Gargoyle Stone Plate. So that's why it kind of suffers, right? It suffers not because it's a bad item, it suffers because it's just not these items, right? It's quite good on Darius though. So if you're up against a full AP team, then you can round out your build with like like this, right? But you know, um, for the most part, you're gonna be building Spirit Visage instead of it because of how powerful Gargoyle Stone Plate is. Silver Mirror Dawn, it's an amazing counter item, really. This is really, really good, right? If you're up against a Mordekaiser, or if you're up against like a Malzahar or like a Warwick, someone with like a suppression or like a CC that just messes you up, like Lulu Polymorph, then Silver Mirror Dawn is gonna be your like item to build, right? You buy QSS and you save the QSS until you can get this item later on into the game, right? So you're better off sitting on the QSS. But yeah, this is, I don't have to say too much more. It's insanely good into situations where it's good against, 
so the ones you use QSS, it's just not something you're going to be building every game. Death's Dance. I overhyped this item. It's not as good as I said it was, right? Death's Dance has evolved to the point where it is only good against full AD teams, right? If you're up against a full AD team, you can go Death's Dance. But how often do we run into that? Mages are running all over the place, one-shotting everyone, so I would not get this item. And I don't remember the last time I got it, but yeah. Um, not the best item at all. Um, Chem Tech Chainsword. I hate the dude. By the way, the right naming of these items are so asinine. I just hate that. But yeah, Kempunk Kempunk Chainsword Kempunk Kempunk Chainsword is a very good item. It's our resident um, anti-heal item. So if you're up against like an Aatrox of Vladimir and you bought an Executioner's in lane, you can get this item. And it's got a quite nice stats for what it is, right? It gives us a very good anti-heal, right? It's a better anti-heal source than, than Thorn Mail by far, right? Because it actually puts them under 60% like heal and cut when they're low HP, which is insane. And it has really good stats, AD, CDR, and HP, right? So it's a nice little item. For when we, need, when we need to counter healing. Now, Vori Quick Blade, unusable. Collector is a very nice, fun item. It's very good into the funnel situations. Cyril does, unusable. By the way, for those of you asking, it does not proc on bleed, right? So if, if you it worked with bleed, it would be like here, because that would be, it would be so funny. Just queue a whole team and they have like 20 seconds slow for like, you know, five seconds. But yeah, unfortunately, it's not working, so it's not even like a 4th one item. Serpent's Fang, horrible stats for Darius. Titanic Hydra is... I would put it here, because it's quite a nice um, damage item, right? It's, it's quite good at just, like... If you don't care about anything except getting stats, and it's a very good item to pair with Gore Drinker, by the way. So if you're going for the Gore Drinker meat... HB, AD, sort of, you know, like brain damage. I'm going to run into the enemy team and see what happens build. Then it's quite good because it gives us a lot of HP and a lot of AD, right? The actives are kind of worthless. We don't really care about that, but like it's just a great ball of stats, right? So if you're going for an extra damage item, it can be quite useful. You know, it's just worse than Cleaver at that at being that extra damage item because Cleaver gives us HP and CDR. And the armor cleave, whereas this just gives you AD and health. So yeah. Uh Abyssal Mask, it's unusable, really. It it works with our E, but it's just horrible. I would never touch this. Um, if you're basically inting and want to um like you know think that you contributed to the game, right? Because like it's a support item, it's horrible. But let's say you're just completely inting and it's up to one person to carry the game, then I guess it's not the worst choice. Horrible, 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 and horrible. All right, so those are all of our builds, all of our items for Darius, right? Sorry for being a bit fidgety in this video. Um, I drank a lot of coffee, so yeah, <laughs> gotta stay up all night. But yeah, and uh, study. But yeah, um, yeah, that is our item tier list. Um. I don't think I forgot anything. I think the tier list looks quite well. The only thing that's like kind of eh is the order of the items. I, I was gonna make an attempt to have the items in a proper order, but they ended up just being in, um, you know, alphabetic order, I guess. Um, well, not really. It's just, just some random order, I guess. It was the order that the tier list was already in. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Build these every game and build these some games, ignore the rest of these items, right? I mean, you can you can, you can can build some of these too for some games, but anything down from here is just for fun. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy this, and I have very nice videos coming up for you guys. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.